the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Speed Gibson, his uncle, Clint Barlow, and Barney Dunlap have twice foiled the attempts of spies of the dangerous criminal, the Octopus, to halt their coming to Hong Kong, China, where he has centered his smuggling activities. The Octopus has only begun to fight the three members of the International Secret Police, and knowing that they are traveling in disguise and are coming to China aboard the China Clipper, dispatches a renegade aviator known as Splinters to await the Clipper at Wake Island and kidnap Speed. In the last episode, you remember, the aviator managed to get speed alone under the pretext of showing him his special bullet plane. The rising wind bespoke the typhoon which the Clipper weather stations forecast, and Clint and Barney discover speed's disappearance and go out to look for him. The heart of the typhoon, a huge column of water, passes southwest of Wake Island, and the boys are forced to the ground by the terrific wind. But at last, with the worst of it over, we find them buffeted and gasping for breath. Wow, that was a close call. I never want to be any closer to a typhoon than we was. Uh, forget about us. We've got to find speed. I can't see anything until I get some of this dirt out of my eyes. I think I got half a Wake Island. Come on, hurry up. The octopus has sent one of his thugs to kidnap speed. I'll hunt him down if I have to tear Asia apart. Take it easy, Clint. Don't let it get you. That's just what the octopus wants. He thinks by kidnapping Speed, he'll throw you off the track and you'll hunt for the kid instead of him. Yeah, come on, Bonnie. Let's go down. I want to get my hands on that aviator. The plane's still there. Clint, you don't think that rat would take off in a typhoon? No, I'm not thinking until I know. You'll be able to see if the plane's there. As soon as we get around the corner of the hotel. Why did the kid ever leave the hotel in the first place? He knew that pilot was under suspicion. He may have had some idea in the back of his head of learning what he was really up to. Why the dickens did I ever allow him to join the secret police? Why didn't I have sense enough to stand by my first decision? Too late to talk about that now. Clint. Clint, the plane's still there. Still got its canvas covering on. Yes. Well, have your gun ready, Barney. We're not taking any chances with this fella. You're darn tootin' we're not. He's moving around under the canvas. Let's run for the plane. And stay on the windward side. And keep well down until we get the lay of the land. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Easy now. Easy. I'm going to rip back the canvas. You you cover me with your gun, Barney. Right. You all set? Yep. Let her rip. Hey! Suffering wang doodle speed. <laughs> Barney! Gee, you scared me when you ripped that canvas back like that. We scared you? And what do you think you've been doing to us? We tried to walk through a typhoon to look for you. That's all. It's just a typhoon. Gee, I'm sorry, Barney. I thought I was helping you guys out. Look. What? The mystery pilot. And he's out cold as a cucumber. Uh Uh-huh. I gave him an uppercut. You gave him a... Gee, what is this? Clint and me are supposed to be working on this case, too. And you're getting results single-handed. I only did what I thought was right. Well, for one thing, you disobeyed orders, Steve. Yeah, Clint, but... Uh, No excuses. You disobeyed orders and ran a risk that might have upset all our plans. Had this man succeeded in kidnapping you, the octopus would have held all the winning cards. Now, how could I continue pursuing him with your life in danger? I... I never thought of that, Clint. But I really wasn't in any danger. This guy didn't think I knew much, I guess, because he told me to get in the plane to look at the controls closer. And he started to climb in, but gave a quick look around first. That's when I hit him. You sure gave him a good one, kid. He's sleeping as peaceful as a baby. I didn't want to have any trouble with him while I was trying out this short wave set of his. Isn't it a pit? Now, wait. You keep that helmet off and come with me, Speed. Take out the prisoner, Barney. We'll carry him back to the hotel. As a prisoner, Clint? Yes, the mask's off. From now on, we're traveling not as the Fletchers and Pierre Dorsey, but as members of the International Secret Police. The octopus has shown only too clearly that he knows us for what we are. But our disguises, Clint. And you and Barney can forget them. But I'll still use most of mine, in looks only. Now, the fact that the octopus doesn't know how I really look may save our necks someday. What about passports? Uh, Chief Riley saw to that. I have three that will replace the ones we use under our assumed names. I'll have to do a lot of explaining to the Clipper officials, but our credentials will establish our identities. We'll have no trouble. I hope not. We have enough octopus trouble without anything else added to it. What about this plane and short wave set, Clint? We'll cover it up again until we have time enough to fully investigate the job. 
I believe that short wave set may be one of the things that'll unlock the secret of the octopus. I sure hope so. Hey, look. This plane's got a radio telegraph as well as a short wave phone. This guy's equipped for everything. Mm, a radio telegraph, huh? Mm. That means he's been picking up all the clipper calls, too. Knowing their frequencies, he could listen to all their movements. Well, that's how he knew when we were to arrive at Wake Island. And whether we were going to lay over or not because of the typhoon. Do you think so, Clint? Mm, it's a guess, but I think it's pretty good. You know, the weather reports to the clipper ships not only come from all the stopovers, but from ships at sea to the south and north, and then from other clipper planes, too. See, this man should have notes on these weather reports and perhaps other data that might lead us to the octopus. Gee, let's search him here. Oh, and have the wind blow all the papers around in case there are any? No, be silly. Well, then let's go back to the inn as soon as possible and give this guy the works. That is, if we can bring him around after that clip speed gave him. He's coming around already, Clint. Yeah, so I see. Well, that's good. Now we won't have to carry him back to the inn. Good is right. I'm getting more of a workout on this job than I ever got on anything else. Oh. It's worth it, though, Barney. Oh. Anything's worth it that'll lead us to the octopus. <laughs> Master, you sent for me? Yes, Quan Wu. I have just received word from Wake Island. From the aviator Splinters? No, from our other operator there. Splinters has been arrested. Arrested? By whom? Need you ask? Clint Barlow. Splinters, the clumsy fool, forgot that Speed Gibson has been trained by his uncle for the secret police. He attempted to kidnap him by the crudest of methods. Result? Speed knocked him out. But it is an outrage. Such things cannot happen to the members of the octopus band. Such things have happened and are happening. But they will happen no more. Ever since our persistent police left their headquarters in New York, I have attempted to turn them from their purpose, warn them by subtle methods. I will no longer attempt this. From now on, I will strike at them directly, if I must meet them face to face. You would not do that, Master. No one has ever seen your face except me. Correction, Kwan Wu. No one but you has ever seen my face and known me to be the octopus. True. But this Clint Barlow is clever. Your paths have crossed before. Perhaps he would recognize you. Perhaps his uncanny intuition would warn him of your identity, of danger. <laughs> I am not afraid of Barlow, Kwan Wu. I respect his talents, but I do not fear them. Yes, master. And what is your next move to be? Splinters, the aviator, is new in our organization. I do not believe that he has learned the value of silence. You think he will talk? Yes. He and my bullet plane must be uh, removed before they tell any of my secrets to Barlow and to Speed Gibson. And how is this to be accomplished? That is up to my operator on Wake Island. I shall give the order to go ahead now over the shortwave radio. For very probably Barlow is questioning Splinters at this very minute. Uh, sit over here, Speed. I want you to be in on this questioning. Okay, Clint. Where's Barney? He's guarding the plane. Has one of the company men with him. You expect the octopus has more spies on Wake Island than this one here? I don't know, but I'm not taking any chances. Now then, let's see what our prisoner has to say. What's your name? Splinters. Splinters, huh? It's rather a new alias, isn't it? I come when I hear it. That's all a name's good for anyhow. Well, I don't blame you for wanting to forget your other name, Ted Bailey. Well, how did you know? How are you talking about? I remember a notice I once saw in the United States Naval Office. You were wanted for desertion. Navy. And that's how he came to use that special flying helmet with the earphone pockets. The United States Navy helmet. Yes, Speed. Bailey deserted and took one of the planes with him. They found the plane later, cracked up, but the missing pilot was never located. Until now. All right, all right. Suppose I am Bailey. What are you going to do with me? Send you back to America to face desertion charges and also attempted kidnapping. You can't prove that kidnapping business. Speed's testimony will prove plenty, Splinters. But let me remind you that nothing, nothing that awaits you in America will compare to the fate you'd suffer if the octopus can ever lay hands on you again. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I don't know nothing about this octopus. You know plenty, Splinters. And I want you to talk. Because the crimes you may have done in the past won't compare with the crime you will commit by not giving evidence against the octopus. He's not only an enemy of the United States, but an enemy of the whole world. I have an idea that you've seen samples of his terrorism. I, I, 
I have nothing to say. Where's the hangar you flew from? Where's your base of operations in Hong Kong? I don't know what you're talking about. Why were you going to take me, Splinters? Nowhere. I was just showing you the plane. Oh, the story you tell of trying to break the speed record between Guam and Wake Islands is full of holes. You haven't been able to prove a thing. I've made inquiries. Guam never heard of you. Neither has Manila. Oh, come clean, Splinters. Don't have a false sense of loyalty to a man who won't turn a hand to help you if you're taken by the police. It ain't loyalty. It's, it's it... fear. Fear, isn't it? Fear of what the octopus will do if you fail. You knew a typhoon was coming up when you attempted to kidnap Speed, and yet you dare fly into her, rather than face the revenge of the octopus if you fail to accomplish what he ordered you to do. Yeah, Barlow, that's it. He said he'd torture me. I'd rather die in my plane, clean and quick, than go back to him and be tortured today. Then lead us to him, Spinders. Help us in our fight against the worst criminal ring of the 20th century, and return to the United States to face the music, knowing that you've done your bit to end crime. Yeah, you're right. I'll tell... I'll tell. He's... Oh, look out. Someone broke the window. He's come after me. He told me he'd get me. No matter where I was. Help me. Help me. Help me.